Now, Enterprise Connect, which is this series of events, is about bringing together different people, different players across the innovation ecosystem. We're creating a forum at which people with an interest in enterprise can connect. So this is for all of King's College London entrepreneurial community and the friends outside of our immediate walls. If I ever had any work to do, I used to study at Pizza Express because I used to find that I wasn't distracted. It's a rather nice table compared to my Leeds uh, accommodation, which was not so pleasant. And uh, pizza and a salad, drink, about 13 pounds at the time, which was kind of lavish for a student, but I was trading and making money. Um, so I, I thought about what I was going to do for my first stock that I would effectively weather the storm with on the market. So I bought and sold Pizza Express for a year, pretty much only one stock, that's how I started. What I found was that there are a lot of small and medium-sized businesses around the UK that just are owned by people who don't have the capacity to float. They don't necessarily have the financial inclination, they don't have the... Um, they don't have the patience or the inclination to be on the stock market, which can be tricky at times with a lot of regulation. Um, they were too old, they couldn't be bothered for a lot of them, they made a lot of money, but what made sense was they were happy to take shares in return for their business because they would experience capital growth and all sorts of other, um, all sorts of other opportunities and evidently kindly had faith in me. So I floated a shell and went shopping for businesses. Finally, it's, it's a really fantastic thing to be part of a generation where ideas and innovation is, is so highly prized. These were not things that were really talked about when I was at university. I mean, I got my, well, I've made it clear I got my education in Pizza Express whilst reading the FT, which I know is, 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 uh, is slightly unusual, but these sorts of things were not available to me. So for those of you that are students, I wish you all luck on your journeys, and uh, I'm sure they're going to be infinitely more interesting than you could have dreamed of. And uh, I think the most important lesson that I have learned through all of this is patience, so be patient. Thank you. Today I want to talk about three things that have helped me quite a bit uh, in, in, in my life so far. One of them is perseverance, uh, because I think one of the, the most important traits for successful people, whether they're entrepreneurs, uh, uh, rock stars, or students, is the fact that they persevere. I want to talk about talent because um, I think talent is the, the currency of business and um, if you are able to attract really, really talented people around you, then you can do really well. And thirdly, I want to talk about change and how um, it's really, really important to, to adapt to the, the world and uh, how that's helped me quite a bit in, uh, in the uh, many years since I've, uh, I've started businesses. I was this 19 year old wanting to, to uh, build stuff without actually having any business experience and obviously some clients didn't really trust me with their money uh, but I lied about my age and you know persevered in that and um, things went well and we started growing which takes me to the the second story that I have which is about talent and uh, because things were going so well and I had become this sort of um, um, figure of young entrepreneurship in my home country, Romania, which is a country with three people anyway, so it's not a big accomplishment. Um, and we, uh, it was going very well. I had made a lot of money, so I decided to become a media mogul in Romania. And uh, I went and founded uh, one of the first online TV channels in, in Romania called Brain TV, TV for smart people. Um, and I built a production studio and I hired people to, build, to produce and speak in front of the camera and we're producing shows and so on. And after about a year, we realized that there aren't really that many smart people to build a big enough audience to make enough money. So I've, I've been involved in a, a startup that did okay, my first one, one that failed very successfully, um, another one that, that um, raised millions and made, making millions, and I've invested and been involved with a lot of companies, and I see the same three things in all the projects that I'm involved with that are successful. People push, push harder than, than, than anybody else is willing to push. And as Seth Godin, a very um, well-known business writer in the US, uh, likes to say, uh, overnight success usually takes 15 years. So thank you and good luck. I realized that the ideas that we had also come up with, normally over a beer or actually pretty much always over a beer and different business ideas that we'd kind of created en route to growing this agency, were as valuable 
financially to me as this brand I'd built over eight years uh, of, of slogging it. And these, these were business ideas that had next to no love, next to no staffing, barely any money. But it was a really good lesson for me to take forward into my next ventures. So always listen to your mum. So let me introduce you to my mum. That's me, that's my mum. We, as kids, have been teasing my mum for the best part of 30 years, the fact she's still single, but we'd love her to meet someone new. And she turned to me and she said, Matt, well, actually, Matthew, uh, how about you help me find my knight in shining armour? Which is now, I've said it to so many journalists, it's a bit of a PR cliche, but it was very cute at the moment. And it was one of those light bulb moments where I thought, you know, maybe there's a business model in here. Because immediately I turned to online dating for meeting somebody new, and that's, that's something, I'm 35 now, that's something my generation certainly does. But I could never imagine putting my mum on, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but something like Match.com. I mean, on the same site as where a bunch of my mates hang out? Hmm, definitely not. There's a guy called Eric Reese who wrote something called The Lean Startup. And again, Michael, it goes a little bit, uh, it contradicts your kind of, the nice step-by-step -step, uh, sort of building a, a business from scratch um, methodology. And it's much more around fail fast, fail cheap, uh, and learn from your mistakes, iterate your business until you have a product that works, and then invest in it and then scale it. Okay? And it's, it's a nice bit of thinking, and I, I like that way of thinking. It's, yeah, it's pretty crude, but an online business is essentially a great big funnel where you pour numbers in at the top, you work out your conversions, and at the bottom, a number of people will pay. And you get all those conversions and metrics right, it's a really simple business. Put that against creating a brand that has heart and emotional engagement, you've got a really powerful combination. The opportunity of this idea is based on some facts, the fact that many diabetes patients in, in this country and also all over the world, and the eyelid transplantation is the only, only potential cure for the type 1 diabetes, here I said it's potential because it's still not, a, not a the established pro protocol and it's ex still the experimental pro procedure. I think everybody has an op opinion of what, what kind of business uh, plan is, is good, but for me, it's, I think it's need, it need, needed to be the technical, technology driven and the addressing unmet needs and the Second thing is a feasible business model. I did an analysis of the business model in the biopharma area. Basically, I found two business models in pharma, only, only two. So one is early stage company, which they usually they, found, they focus on the development of early stage technology. And the second business model is for big farmers. They have, uh, their fo focus is to to finish the later stage of development of the product and the, the marketing. So what's learned from the, my experiments, the first thing is to convince investors is a, is a very, very tough task. It's probably to convince judges is more much easier than the investors. Then the second one is having a senior manage, management or a mentor who is an expert in the area should, is very important for the early stage companies. How do you like, get investors to believe in your dream and also to invest into the business? Like, for an upcoming startup like myself, I'm more interested in see, obviously convince, convincing people to believe in the idea is worth of, um, worthy of putting or investing money or just you know, getting the idea out there really. So I, I once was invited at an event to speak about exactly that, mm -hmm. and I, I, I wanted to be a bit controversial, so I started the, uh, my, my presentation saying that in order to raise money from investors, you need to get them drunk or have sex with them. And I was, <laughs> and I was only half joking, because I think um, when it comes to early stage startups, uh, <laughs> when it comes to early stage startups, um, as in, seed stage, up to a million pounds in, in raising uh, in, in, in uh, round size. What investors invest in is the entrepreneurs rather than anything else. You don't have any numbers at that stage. Um, and if you do, they're probably quite small. 
So what they believe in is the founder and the team and the market and the product's ability to conquer that market. When you get to later stage, as in you know, you're raising millions of, of dollars or pounds, they do look at the numbers because they're, they're committing a large amount of money. And then the second sort of difference is that angel investors usually invest in entrepreneurs, whereas venture capitalists invest in companies. And that's why you have usually seed rounds done by angels and then VC, um, big rounds done by VCs. Uh, as far as your solution or your service or your product is concerned, what do you foresee as the biggest technological op opportunity as well as the biggest technological threat in terms of your product? We had two people signing them. You can sign one another up as well, so you can sign friends up. And we had a, um, an old lady who was 73 sign up her 76-year-old friend and vice versa. And one of those ladies was on an iPad. Stunning. And so in terms of technology, so we have all the same um, issues and concerns about uh, the kind of cross-platform, the different channels that we're going to need to make sure that we're uh, prevalent upon. But as well as that, we're going to be looking at how currently a good couple of hours of my day is spent helping people copy and paste links and how that's going to shift as this generation are going to become more digitally aware and, uh, and their demands are going to change as the business grows. Um, I was one of the winners in 2011 Lions Bank competition. Two years down the line, I find myself working 24-7 and still passionate. So I worry. You do the best you can for as long as you can, and you try not to exhaust yourself. And, uh, and uh, you probably do exhaust yourself, and then you learn how to unexhaust yourself. Wow, I have nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> Can something be borrowed from the internet startups that can be used in the biotech uh, industry? Or is there such a huge gap that the model should be completely different? When I first uh, um, completed my, my business plan, I thought I got a very great plan and I can pitch to the, to the investors and get the investment. But uh, later, people told me the biotech is, is very difficult, not basically investors have, have no, no confidence in this area. So I, I got very dis, dis, disencouraged in this area. So I, but, uh, the, the question is, can you get the investors, if they don't believe in uh, biotech, whatever, that's fine, can you get them to believe in you? Because if you can get like them to believe you in are. you, then they will fund you just because they like you. And then whether that works or not, it's something to be seen, but if you can get investors to think that biotech is like all crazy, but you're that guy that's going to change it all, then you're going to get the money, the bar none. I'm tempted to leave it on that great note. If they like <laughs> you, they'll invest in you. Oh, it was absolutely brilliant. Uh, I have my own startup. I've been running that startup for quite some time now, and I just came over to listen to other entrepreneurs, listen to their experiences, and there's always something that you can learn from other people, which helps us improve in our own life and our own business. So it was absolutely brilliant. I've come away with ideas about how people go about setting up a business, and I suppose the kind of outlook that you need to have to set up a business. I found it extremely useful because these guys are actually one step ahead. So it, uh, it's very useful for me to see how hard it is to get over there, get ideas of how, how, could do, how could I avoid mistakes and what I can do better in order to reach these targets. So it has been definitely very, very uh, useful in coming here today. It was, um, above everything else, it was quite inspiring actually. So to get new ideas, to see what, um, how people approach the first projects and startups. So I thought it was a good mix, different viewpoints and different backgrounds to how they managed to own a company. Yeah.